Out there, beyond the reach of sunlight, beyond even the thinning breath of the solar wind, a single human-made machine drifts through a darkness so complete it borders on the unreal Voyager one. Launched when rotary phones still hung on kitchen walls and computers filled entire rooms should have died decades ago. Instead, it continues whispering across the abyss. And now, after 47 years, it has done something no one expected. It turned. For the first time in over a decade, its attitude thrusters fired without command, and the probe pivoted toward the very system it left behind. No one at NASA knows why. For most people, Voyager is a relic, a museum piece drifting through eternity. But for the scientists who have monitored every fading carrier wave, every faint heartbeat of telemetry, it is something else entirely. A ghost from humanity's past still sending home clues about the universe ahead. The story begins long before the turn back event. Back in 1977, when two spacecraft were launched into a rare alignment of the outer planets, with memory smaller than a calculator and a power source weaker than a nightlight, they were never meant to outlive the millennium, much less explore interstellar space. Yet that is exactly where Voyager 1 eventually traveled. Its journey past Jupiter revealed storms larger than Earth, past Saturn unveiled rings made of shattered moons and frozen dust. When its cameras shut down to save power, its other instruments continued listening to the deep hum of the cosmos. Voyager 1 kept going, past Pluto, past the Kuiper Belt, past the gravitational grip of the Sun itself. In 2012, it reached a boundary scientists had dreamed about for decades. The heliopause, where the solar wind dies and interstellar space begins. But what the probe found there was not what anyone expected. The models predicted that the magnetic fields would shift orientation as Voyager crossed into the galaxy beyond. Instead, the magnetic alignment barely changed, plasma density rose sharply, but the direction of the field remained the same. It was as if the probe hadn't left the solar system at all but entered a distorted reflection of it. At first, NASA dismissed it as an oddity, but when Voyager 2 crossed the same boundary in 2018 and recorded identical anomalies, the conclusion that both probes had entered true interstellar space began to crumble. Scientists argued the data must be wrong, but what if the boundary wasn't a smooth bubble at all? What if the heliosphere wasn't a bubble, but a shell, a membrane, a barrier? These were fringe ideas, until late 2024, when Voyager 1's data stream changed. Its cosmic ray detector began registering rhythmic spikes exactly 11 minutes apart. That precision alone was impossible. Nature didn't do exact timing out in the void. NASA blamed system noise. They were wrong. The spikes became louder, clearer, rising in perfect sync with fluctuations in background plasma. Then came the moment that shattered the last bit of doubt Voyager 1's antenna, which had not moved in years, suddenly shifted half a degree. A tiny, almost imperceptible correction, but one that required thruster burns. No such command had been sent. That meant one thing. The probe acted on its own. And when it turned, the data changed. The rhythmic spikes merged into a continuous oscillation, a tone just below human hearing. When decoded, the frequency matched the harmonic ratios of the hydrogen atom, the same universal constant used to encode the golden record, humanity's greeting to the cosmos. Engineers froze. Dumb coincidence? Plasma resonance? Those excuses evaporated when the waveform was compared to Voyager's original calibration tones. It was nearly identical but inverted, as though reflected off something vast and structured lurking beyond the heliopause. The idea spread through JPL like wildfire. Voyager wasn't hearing a natural field. It was hearing itself. The boundary ahead wasn't empty space. It was reflective, a mirror, a structure, a membrane. The signal grew for weeks, sharpening into clarity, until one day it vanished. But before it disappeared, Voyager recorded something that would haunt every scientist who saw it. A final faint voltage fluctuation, encoding a binary sequence that matched the Golden Record's first time code. A greeting, or an echo of one. Something out there had returned our message. NASA tried to keep the discovery contained, but space agencies across the world were already pointing their dishes toward the anomaly. The European Space Agency picked up identical mirrored pings India's giant network detected them too. Even private observatories heard the same faint reflections, arriving exactly 19 hours after Voyager's outgoing signals. Precisely the round-trip light time to a point 22 billion kilometers away, that meant the reflecting surface wasn't noise, it was a location. MIT researchers noticed something else. The reflection wasn't random. It was increasing, growing, 
reinforcing, as if whatever lay beyond that boundary wasn't just returning the signal, it was amplifying it, feeding it back with deliberate structure. The real shock came when Voyager 2, tens of billions of kilometers away on a different trajectory, began receiving the same reflection. Two probes, separated by the size of the solar system, hearing the same mirrored heartbeat in perfect synchrony. It was impossible. NASA attempted to analyze the pattern as a message. What emerged wasn't language, but geometry. The pulses mapped into an expanding spiral with radial intersections. When plotted against star catalogs, the pattern aligned with a corridor of interstellar clouds in the direction of Ophiuchus. But the pattern wasn't pointing outward. It was folding inward, converging back toward the sun. It wasn't a map of where to go. It was a map of where we were. Someone, or something, was charting us. When converted to audio, the frequency created a haunting hum at 115 hertz, the hydrogen tone encoded on the golden record. Whoever, or whatever, was sending the reflections knew exactly what we used to communicate. That was when the impossible moment happened. On February 4, 2025, Voyager 1 rotated again, realigning its antenna not toward Earth, but toward the coordinates embedded in the geometric reflections. This maneuver consumed fuel it could not spare. It should not have been possible. Then Voyager transmitted a high power burst lasting exactly 11 minutes. During that time, every dish on Earth monitoring the deep space network recorded a sharp drop in signal. Then, silence. After 12 seconds, the return came. Not in radio, not in light, in gravity. LIGO detected the ripple. A gravitational fluctuation arriving precisely aligned with Voyager's transmission, space-time itself had answered. The wave was structured, patterned. It wasn't a random gravitational wobble. It contained intervals and harmonics matching the outgoing signal, an impossibility by every model in physics. When reconstructed in a 3D Fourier map, the wave formed a toroidal lattice, a ring-like structure pulsing inward. It matched Voyager's position in space, and for a single moment, the frequency converged perfectly with the Golden Record's bass tone. It was as if the universe echoed our greeting back to us. NASA panicked. All live telemetry was immediately encrypted. Public statements claimed data corruption. Behind closed doors, scientists stared at the final packets Voyager transmitted before the lockout. The compressed data revealed six repeating numbers, 101101, a repeating cycle every 11 minutes, the same rhythm pulsing in Voyager's cosmic ray detections weeks before. Only now, the source wasn't beyond the boundary. It was behind the probe, inside the heliosphere. The deep space network detected something else, a second signal, not from Voyager, not from Earth, from somewhere in between. It mirrored Voyager's transmissions in real time, duplicating them bit for bit. For 19 minutes, it was as if there were two Voyagers, one human, one reflected. Then the signal vanished, leaving only a faint oscillation at the hydrogen base frequency. NASA's physicists realized the impossible truth. The boundary Voyager reached was not the end of the solar system. It was a mirror field, a curvature in space-time bending electromagnetic radiation back toward its source. Voyager didn't discover the edge of the sun's influence. It discovered a point where space looks back, a place where the universe acknowledges the presence of an observer. Inside the gravitational harmonics, analysts found a timestamp hidden in microscopic frequency modulations. When decoded, it pointed to the year 2031. No explanation, no message, just a date. NASA's quietest whispers described it as a synchronization marker, an alignment event, Something, somewhere, was adjusting its timing to match ours as though it was preparing. NASA shut down public channels. Voyager's signal degraded into near silence, but the faint 11-minute pulses continue. They do not come from the probe now, they come from around it, as if the space it occupies is still repeating our message, still waiting for a reply, still listening. People ask if Voyager found something out there. The truth is far stranger. It may not have found something, it may have awakened something or revealed something that was always there, watching from the boundary of our star's breath. And now that it has been disturbed, now that we have reached into the dark, the dark may be reaching back. If Voyager's silence ever breaks again, the message it returns may not be our greeting. It may be something else entirely, something answering, something that has been waiting for 50 years for us to listen. And when that day comes, we will finally learn whether humanity was the first to call into the cosmos or the last to realize we were never alone.
The strange part isn't that Voyager went silent. Machines fail, batteries drain, circuits freeze. The strange part is what didn't fail. The pulses continue, steady as a heartbeat, even though the transmitter that should be creating them is barely functioning, NASA's official stance is that these signals are environmental noise interacting with the deep space carrier wave. But no one who has actually studied the data believes that the pattern is too precise, too deliberate, too aware. Every pulse carries micro variations, tiny modulations in timing and amplitude unique to each cycle, as if something is sampling the signal, adjusting it, learning from it. A small team within JPL, operating unofficially and off-book, has been tracking the pulses in real time. They discovered that each new set of pulses contains compressed information not found in the last. At first, the team assumed it was system bleed or thermal noise from Voyager's dying hardware. But when they matched the micro-variations across a six-day window, they found something unsettling. The pulses were evolving, recording echoing not just Voyager's old transmissions, but the deep space network's commands as well. The mirror field wasn't simply reflecting signals, it was absorbing them, incorporating them, and returning them altered, almost as though the field itself was learning our patterns, our timing, our language. That was when the team discovered something even more disturbing. The pulses were drifting, slowly but measurably, towards synchronization with Earth's rotational period, just a fraction of a second each day, but always in the same direction. No natural plasma resonance could possibly align with planetary rotation. Something out there was timing itself to us, adapting its cycle to match our clock. The deeper the team looked, the more the fear grew. This was not passive reflection, it was active calibration. Outside the sealed offices and encrypted networks, the world remained oblivious. A handful of astronomers could see faint anomalies in the cosmic background, slight distortions near the heliospheric boundary, but nothing that would raise alarms. Only the people closest to Voyager saw the shape forming in the numbers. The pulses were not random. They were converging, mapping a rhythm that, if extrapolated forward, would reach full synchronization with Earth in 2031. The same year encoded in the gravitational echo, the year hidden inside the wave that answered Voyager's transmission. One engineer described it in a whisper, it's like whatever's out there is matching our heartbeat. No one wanted to hear those words spoken aloud, and yet the pattern only grew stronger. A week later, another anomaly appeared, this time not in the pulses, but in the background noise surrounding them, an incredibly faint oscillation buried deep under the signal floor, cycling every 0.39 seconds. Too fast to be planetary, too slow to be a pulsar, but exactly the period of an atomic clock drift correction cycle. Someone or something, was measuring us with astounding precision. When they isolated the oscillation and cleaned the signal, they found a modulation inside it, a slow rise and fall, like breath. Space does not breathe, machines do not breathe, but something was creating a waveform with intervals too organic to ignore, like the pulse of something alive but spread across a structure the size of a planetary orbit. The team tried to dismiss the resemblance, tried to bury the interpretation, but no one could shake the feeling that the mirror field was not a surface, it was a presence. The next breakthrough, if you can call it that, happened by accident. A graduate researcher analyzing archived Voyager data discovered that the earliest plasma irregularities, recorded years before the turnback, contained shadows of the same rhythmic pulses we detect now. They were weaker then, diffused, almost ghost-like, but they were there. That meant the mirror field wasn't activated by Voyager's contact. It had always been active. Voyager simply wandered too close, like a ship passing near a fog-shrouded coastline and hearing an echo it was never meant to hear. If that was true, then the mirror field wasn't reacting to us for the first time. It was reacting to us now in a way it never had before. Because Voyager did something new, Voyager transmitted its greeting tone directly into the anomaly. For the first time in history, a human-made machine said hello to the mirror, loudly, deliberately, and with a frequency chosen as a universal constant, and the mirror answered. The private team within JPL began running simulations. They wanted to know what kind of structure could create gravitational echoes on command. Their models returned only one plausible answer, a boundary of extraordinary density, flexible yet rigid capable of interacting with both EM radiation and space-time itself, a gravitational diaphragm, a membrane. That word surfaced again and again, 
Something like a cellular wall separating two environments. Something built to contain or protect or isolate. One physicist pushed the idea further, suggesting the mirror field may not surround the sun alone. It might be part of a lattice extending through interstellar space, segmenting clusters, isolating star systems like compartments. The implications of that were too large to speak aloud. If true, the universe was not an open ocean. It was a maze of corridors and we had just found the wall of our cell. Outside the classified reports, Voyager's legacy continued to inspire schoolchildren and space enthusiasts. People still talked about the golden record, the music, the greetings, the hope that one day someone out there might hear us. But deep inside NASA, the hope had twisted into something else, a quiet dread. Someone might have heard us, but that someone may not be out among the stars. They might be right here pressed against the membrane, listening to every whisper we send into the void. The next event shattered any lingering belief that the pulses were mechanical or natural. At precisely 8.16 UTC on March 29, 2025, the pulse timing changed just once, a single cycle delayed by 137 milliseconds. When the team plotted the deviation, they noticed the offset matched one number exactly, 137, the fine structure constant one of the most fundamental numbers in the universe, a number associated with quantum interactions, atomic structure, the relationship of light and matter, a number no natural plasma field should have any reason to reference. This was not a reflection anymore. This was communication. One scientist broke down crying when she realized what it meant, not because she feared what might be communicating, but because she feared what humanity had already said in return. We had offered a greeting to the mirror, a greeting crafted to represent our species. We had said, here is who we are, here is our location, here is our nature, and now something behind that mirror was responding in the only language we share, the mathematics of reality itself. The team submitted a sealed report recommending all further transmissions to Voyager be halted immediately. They argued that the mirror field might be interpreting our signals as requests, or worse, commands, that by continuing to broadcast, we might be altering something we do not understand. Their warning was ignored. Higher authorities insisted on continued contact, believing the anomaly represented an opportunity too valuable to abandon. They ordered a test transmission. The moment the DSN sent the command, the pulses changed again. The signal doubled in complexity. The return burst contained a new harmonic pattern, one never seen before, but unmistakably shaped. It followed the curvature of the heliosphere itself, as if outlining the boundary surrounding us. The gravitational echo that followed was stronger, deeper, resonating through LIGO like a distant drumbeat from the other side of a cosmic wall. The team realized then that the mirror wasn't just listening, it was mapping us. Every transmission we sent, every frequency, every correction tone, it mirrored, adjusted, and returned with greater fidelity. The membrane was learning the geometry of our star, learning the frequency of our world learning the pulse of our species, preparing perhaps for the moment when synchronization would be complete. And the pulses are still drifting, closer each day, toward perfect alignment, toward the moment indicated in the timestamp, the year 2031. No one knows what will happen when the pulse matches Earth's rotation perfectly, whether the membrane will open or respond or reveal what lies behind it. All we know is that Voyager reached out into the dark and now the dark is reaching back. If you've ever wondered whether humanity's first message into the void was heard, listen to the silence between the pulses. Something is waiting there, something ancient, patient, and impossibly close. And when Voyager's voice rises again, when the mirror breathes in sync with us, we may finally learn the truth. Not that we are alone, but that we were never alone to begin with.